All right, so let's continue with the same model and see if we have any pooling equilibrium. By the way, having a separating equilibrium does not mean that uh, it's the only equilibrium. We may actually have separating equilibrium, which is very desirable because the firms can actually separate, but we at the same time may have a pooling equilibrium. So the, you know, the good equilibrium and also bad equilibrium. It could be the case. So in this particular example, let's see if we may have a pooling equilibrium. Let's remember though, what was the meaning of pooling equilibrium. So pooling equilibrium is an outcome where all the types choose exactly the same action. Here we have two types and two actions, get education or not education. So therefore we have two possible pooling equilibria. One of which is that both high and low productivity guys take or get the education. Or another possibility is that nobody gets an education. All right, so let's check the first one. Uh, both high and low type gets education. Okay, so here, once again, I'm going to check the utilities of the high type and the low type. All right, so let's start with the high type. So um, the high type gets an education versus the high type gets no education. All right, and see, I want to see that this utility is greater than the other one. And I'm also going to look at the low type getting education and the low type getting no education. And I also want this to be greater than, so this is greater than this, so that both agents prefer to get education. Is it possible? I mean, is it the case? Let's see. The high productivity guys, he is getting an education. The low productivity guy is also getting an education. So. It is not like the separating equilibrium. So when the firms observe an education, I mean, they observe, so they have a candidate and the candidate has a PhD degree, but this is an environment, a scenario where both Penny and uh, Sheldon-like agents get a PhD. So what are the firms gonna infer? Well, you know what, it can, I mean, the candidate could actually be uh, very high quality, high productivity guy, but it could also be a low productivity guy who is just mimicking the high productivity guy. So we don't know, we can't say in a pooling equilibrium. So what are they gonna do? Well, they're gonna make a guess. Well, with e half probability, it could be high productivity worker, and with half probability, it would be a low productivity worker. So therefore, we shouldn't offer, remember, um, what we would like to uh, offer the wage exactly equal to the productivity of the worker. But if the worker is a high productivity, um, well, our revenue is going to be 15 minus the wage. Uh, but if it is, or if he is a low productivity worker, we're going to make revenue of $10 per hour minus the wage. All right. So if wage is, for example, I don't know, $15, so we may make zero profit, but we may actually also make minus five profit. All right. So if so, therefore, the wage shouldn't be 15. If wage is 12, we actually are going to make three positive three, but we may actually also make negative two. So you see what I mean? So we have to incorporate the likelihood of those potential potentially realized uh, profits. So what is the likelihood that the worker is a high productive worker? One half. What is the worker? So we are basically calculating the expected profit. And what is the likelihood of the worker is a low productive uh, worker? Well, one half. So therefore, what is my therefore uh, expected profit? Well, it's uh, 15 plus tw uh, 10, 25 divided by 2. 12.5 minus W. So this is the expected profit of the firm. And therefore, well, remember, all the firms are identical and they're competitive. And hence, the firms must be offering in a pooling equilibrium, uh, must be offering $12.5 per hour as long as the agent gets an education. Okay? That's probably the most important part 
of the pooling equilibrium. Once again, in a pooling equilibrium, you should always calculate the expected productivity of the worker. What is the expected productivity? Well, 15 and 10 in expectation, equally likely. Here is the expected productivity of the worker, and hence that should be the wage in a pooling equilibrium. Capish? All right. So uh, this is the, uh, the, 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 the wage. Whether you're a high type or low type, the firms cannot distinguish you. Uh, but the thing is, you are going to suffer only $1 if you're a high productivity guy and $6 if you're a low productivity guy. So the net utility of the high productivity guy is going to be 11.5. The low productivity guy is going to be 6.5. All right, now let's come to the case where these guys did not take the education. All right, so if we are in the world where we expect that the high productivity guy and the low productivity guy is expected to take an education, and if we observe a candidate without a PhD degree, what are we gonna say? Uh, well, I mean, remember, uh, we believed, we, we conjectured that the worker should be getting education. But all of a sudden, I came up with someone who doesn't have any education. So what am I going to believe? Uh, well, that's sort of uh, why we have all these off-equilibrium path beliefs, Bayesian equilibrium versus Bayesian perfect equilibrium, sequential equilibrium. Again, all these topics are for game theory uh, people. Um, but in this course, what we're going to assume that if we observe something that was off the chart, uh, off the conjecture, the firms are going to believe that, well, it must be the low productivity guy. Okay? So, um, so if you don't get any edu education, the firms are going to believe that you are actually the low productivity guy who were just lazy enough and, and didn't take the education. So they're going to offer you 10. All right, so same here. If you don't get education, whether you're a high productive or low productive guy, you're gonna get a wage 10. Um, and then there's gonna be no cost of education, it's zero. So in net, you're gonna make 10 utilities. I mean, both high and low productivity guys are gonna make 10 utilities. So what happens is that the high productivity guy will actually prefer getting education over no education, but the low productivity guy will actually prefer no education over education, all right? In the separating equilibrium, it was worth getting the education because by mimicking the high productivity guy, he could make $15 per hour. But now, because he can't distinguish himself from the high productivity guy, he is not making that much money. And so it's not worth getting education, all right? Uh, oh, by the way, in separating equilibrium, I'm sorry, in, even in separating equilibrium, the, um, uh, uh, the, the consumer, uh, the low productivity guy was preferring to get no education. So here, obviously, he should get no education. The bottom line, we're not going to have a pooling equilibrium where both agents get an education. All right. So it's not going to happen. Clear? All right. Now the second scenario. So I'm going to go... Uh, relatively faster in the second scenario. Both, uh, well, none. So this is the second situation. None of the high type and the low type gets education. All right. Well, that means getting education actually, uh, well, this can be in equilibrium. All right. This can be in equilibrium only if both agents prefer not to get education, all right? So it should be regret-free, all right? As usual, it should be regret-free. So what does that mean? That means no education should bring these agents, both agents, higher utility. Well, I have to erase all those numbers because the wages will change and hence the utility values will change. So I have to do all these calculations again. And I also need to change the sign of those inequalities because for this to be an equilibrium, 
no education is regret-free outcome, we have to have, by the way, pre in the previous arguments, we have to have greater than or equal to. Uh, for some reason, I just write greater than strictly, so it should be greater than or equal to. And here, it should be less than or equal to. So, the high type guy should prefer not having an education over education, and the low type guy should prefer not having education over education. Okay? Let's see if this is the case. Well, <clears throat> if they both get no education, again, we are in a framework, in a, in a conjecture, in a world where both Penny and Sheldon kind of guys do not get a PhD. So whenever the firm applies, uh, whenever a worker applies to the firm, uh, none of them are gonna uh, present any PhD degree. And so the firm is gonna say, oh, you know what? Uh, this guy could be Sheldon-like, high productivity guy, or Penny-like, low productivity guy. I can't distinguish. So in expectation, the, the productivity of the worker is gonna be 12.5. And so I should be offer $12.5 as a wage. Minus zero cost of education. So the net utility for both high and low type are going to be 12.5. The question is, can they get higher utility if they get an education? Well, uh, remember, in this course, our assumptions are always if the agents, if the workers take an action which is outside of the conjecture, and here the conjecture is that nobody will get an education, all right? So that means one of the agents indeed gets an education. So here the interpretation this time is going to be, oh, it should be the high type, all right? Because if the low type gets education, I mean, nobody was expected to get an education. So, it, well, if somebody is getting an education, it should be the high type, all right? So that's going to be the belief. Again, let's suppose. Well, that means... If you take an education, um, the firms are going to believe that you're in a high type, so they're going to pay you $15. So here, the low type is mimicking like he is a high type. So the $15 will be the salary, but because they're getting education, there's going to be a cost, uh, $6 for the low type. So what happens is $9 of net utility for low type, and this is $14 net utility for high type. So what do we observe? Yes, the low type will be super happy with this outcome. Uh, I mean, no education is definitely better. So the low type prefers no education over education. Again, under the conjecture that none of the guys were expected to get an education. High type, however, prefers to get education because 14 is in fact higher than 12.5. So what does that mean? That means thus we don't have pooling equilibrium in which nobody takes an education. Okay? So, in conclusion, after we analyzed case one and case two, what did we learn? Well, we learned that there's going to be no pooling equilibrium in this case. And in the previous video, we already shown that there is an equilibrium, a separating equilibrium, where high type will get the diploma and the low type will not. So therefore, in this game, there's only one equilibrium, which is the separating equilibrium, where high type will get the education and the low type will not get the education. And so the types will be revealed perfectly and hence the efficient outcome will be revealed, will be realized thanks to the education because the education, the agents are going to use the education to signal their productivity and it's going to work. Beautiful, right? Yes, I hope that was clear. In the next video, I'm going to make another example. And with that example, I will just change the cost of education slightly. And you'll see we may actually get completely different results. All right? So it's coming up next.